for i on behalf of entire ancrum team welcome you for this another session of lecture based on a specialized topic and today the topic for discussion is about forensic when we hear about forensic how do we correlate we have seen tv serials like cid where dr salunke has always made his mind to find out the crim criminal with the help of his chemical analysis tool and today with the help of hptlc we are going to see how can we utilize it for similarly utilizing it for different types of drug analysis in the field of forensic so today with us we have my colleague mr abhijit who is present for this lecture and he has visited several fsl laboratories across india has worked with them has an immense exposure to working in forensic division not only in india but also abroad he has visited and so i have uh, he'll be uh, the sessions head today and discussing on the forensic aspect so with this note he has also given several lectures across india not only at educational institutes but specially he has specialized in the forensic analysis and we are also having him over here for this lecture so without any delay i will now hand over the session to him who will be briefing you about various aspects of forensic analysis with hptlc hope you have a good learning and we at the end of the session we will also have a question answer session if you have any question answers in between do write down in the q and a box which is there at the bottom and few questions will be taking up in the session if the questions are not taken up in the session don't worry we'll be replying you by your mail which you have registered with so with this note i now hand over the session once again welcome you all and handing over the session to my colleague mr abhijit yes uh, mr abhijit we can proceed with this lecture thank you yeah thank you dr sekar so as discussed um, i'll be giving you a short presentation about the hptlc instruments which are used in the forensic analysis and then i will be uh, discussing about the actual live cases which i have worked with some of my colleagues have worked in the forensic industry so i'll just share my screen now so again yes welcome all so topic for today's presentation will be modern regulatory hptlc technique no, and application you, oh, sorry to disturb you can you make it in slide show yeah it is in slide show i'll just again stop and again i'll reshare the screen okay uh, no abhijit what she is uh, trying to say is that when you are going in slide show it will show the full screen of the presentation mm hmm yeah so now uh, is it visible in the full screen yes abhijit yeah thank you yeah so we'll continue with the presentation now the topic as i said will be modern regulatory hptlc its technique and applications in forensic science so we come to the basic practice of hptlc so whatever analysis we do either it can be hptlc or any other kind of chromatographic technique the first is and the foremost or i'll say the most important part is the sample preparation so we should keep it as simple as possible because as simple the uh, preparation is the better reproducible the results are so first we prepare the sample then we apply it onto the plate then we go for the chromatographic development then we go for the photo documentation which will give us the visual details on what exactly has been separated on the plate 
is it uv absorbing is it visible does it have any color or it is visible under the fluorescence spectrum of the light then we go for the densitometric scanning if we need we can also hyphenate we can also hyphenate this particular technique of HPTLC with either MS, IR, NMR, derivatization or effect directed analysis or the bioactivity. These are some of the basic parameters which we generally uh, need to follow when we go for high performance thin layer chromatography. Like what should be the application pattern? Should it be spot versus band? What should be the optimum band length, what should be the distance to solvent level, that is your solvent front, then the development distance, then uh, should the chamber be saturated, should the chamber be not saturated, what effect will it have if we go for saturation or we do it without saturation, then if we go for the radiative humidity, which is generally the humidity which is present in the lab or in the normal room where we go for the analysis, so what should be the humidity percentage, should it be kept constant or say there is any specific humidity percentage which should be kept, which should uh, give us uh, reproducible results. So everything depends on what all parameters we use during the analysis. Then one of, uh, I'll say, an useful tool in the forensic community is like the comparison viewer, which is a specialty of the VisionCAD software. So here I've taken an example of curcuma, that is the normal uh, turmeric which we use. So we have uh, many different samples or say for example, we have many different cases which you are going to analyze at the same time. But due to large amount of data, it becomes difficult for us to compare all of them together. But there is a special provision in the software which is provided that is known as the comparison viewer through which I can select the images or the tracks of my interest, say like in the UV absorbing region or say in the white light or after derivatization or in the fluorescent mode. So I can select the tracks of my interest accordingly and then I can just align them besides each other and then, then I can go for the easy comparison. So here what I can do is I can simply compile large amount of data, not only photographs, but uh, if I require, I can go for the spectrums also. So those also can be uh, aligned beside each other and then I can go for the comparison. Then we come to the HPTLC system manager software that is vision cats. So all of these instruments or all of these modules, I'll refer to, uh, to them as the modules. So these modules are connected to each other with the software that is the vision cat software. So sample application devices, chromatogram development devices, documentation, post chromatographic derivatization and everything. So all these are connected via the system manager software that is the vision cats. This is the complete HPTLC system. So we have different modules for different uh, stages of HPTLC analysis. So first is the application, sample application. Then is the chromatogram development, which has the humidity control present. So which will make sure that uh, the specific percentage of humidity is maintained throughout the analysis. Then we have the derivatizer. Then we have the scanner or the detector, which we say. So this works in the wavelength range of 190 to 900 nanometers. And we can use it for scanning and the quantification of whatever is present onto our plate. Then we have the photo documentation module that is the visualizer tool. So this has an inbuilt camera which automatically will uh, capture photograph through the software and it will show it in high definition. So even if there is any component which is present in very less quantities, the image can be amplified as well and we can go for the comparison as I said using the comparison viewer and then in the end we have the hyphenation technique which is the hyphenation of TLC with MS. So we have the HPTLC MS interface. Then we come to the newly launched uh, CAMAG HPTLC Pro. So this was launched in 2019. That was pre-COVID times. So this, I'll show you a short video. Introduce the HPTLC 
so as shown in the video you can see it is compared to a relay race so this means that from one module to the other module automatically the hptlc placed will plate will be passed on manually we don't have to remove the plate dry the plate and then go for the analysis in the next module so here is one more uh, demo that is the fully automatic camag hptlc pro so you can see the application has been completed in the applicator module so after the application the plate will automatically come on to the conveyor belt then passed on to the second module that is the development module so you can see so in the meanwhile the second analysis has been started so all these modules work independent of each other so two analysis are going back to back so this is the latest development so application and development on, of two different uh, methods is going on simultaneously and recently this year the plate holder has been launched so it has become fully automated so you just have to load five plates into the module then give the command from the software and then your analysis will start automatically so at the end of the day you just have to go for the photo documentation and the visualizer so then we come to the different types of modules here so on the screen as you can see one is the linomat 5 and then is the auto sampler 4 and just the recent one which i showed you that is the pro applicator module so the major difference between all the three of these is that the linomat 5 is a semi automatic module where we have to manually rinse the syringe clean the syringe and fill it with either the sample or the standard and then go for the application but the other two are fully automated and also the difference is that except for linomat 5 both of the uh, two will be having a high sample throughput means that either 66 or 75 samples can be loaded in one single go a plate can be kept and back to back applications can be completed but otherwise all of the three are extremely precise all of them follow the glp confirm data transfer for quantification then we come to the uh this is a slightly controversial uh, topic as i can say that sample application how should it be done either it can be contact application or a spray on technique and should it be applied in the form of a band or a spot so on the left hand side you can see the difference between contact application and the spray on technique so first of all uh, when we go for spot application it is through contact application so naturally we are going to touch the surface of the plate that is the silica gel so this can definitely disturb your silica gel surface and improper application can be done also very high sample always gets applied so this will cause uh, increase in the surface area higher the surface area more will be the diffusion and mixing of the bands but the same if you see the spray on technique and also you can see any type of solvent you can use either it can be hexene toluene methanol ethanol water aqueous mixture of water and alcohol that is hydroalcoholic anything you can use but the same type of application and the same separation can be observed so in turn what we can say that spray on technique is the best technique for application which will give us much better results then we come to the sample application techniques uh here i would like to stress a bit more that uh, that is the in situ clean up part so when we um, consider forensic samples definitely those are generally referred to as the dirty samples because of the matrix which is present it has a very complex matrix either it can be body fluids it can be some visceral or tissue samples they can be either fresh or in the degraded form so this causes uh, the matrix to be very complex there is presence of different uh, say fats lipids water molecules n number of molecules are present which are of very high molecular weight so most of the time the sample clean up becomes a very tedious process where we have to separate the 
matrix that is the fatty matrix or the visceral matrix from the sample which becomes very difficult so in this case in hptlc what we can simply do is as it is we can apply it onto the plate or we can try to clean up as much as possible but even if that is not possible it's not a problem what we can simply do is we can just apply it onto the plate then we can use petroleum benzene so that is a non polar uh, solvent and then we can simply develop it as we develop it in the mobile phase so after application i develop my plate in the petroleum benzene solvent so this will dissolve whatever fatty matrix is there on the plate and it will dissolve and separate it from the sample and go to the top that is your solvent front which should be more than the desired solvent front using your mobile face so after this is done we just need to dry off the plate and then use the mobile face for separation so what this will do is this will in turn clean up the sample before the actual mobile face is being used and this will make sure that the blotching which happens or the uh, spreading of the fatty material which happens on the plate is completely avoided the sample is also cleaned up and you can go for proper visualization and detection of the sample later then superimposing also can be done that is the uh, internal spiking instead of internal spiking we can simply over spot the standard sample onto one single track and then we can go for double confirmation so this is the manual technique for development which is the twin trough chamber so we use a filter paper for saturation of the chamber what we do is we pour the mobile phase on the filter paper we tilt the chamber to approximately 45 degrees so that in these two troughs the mobile phase that is either 10 ml or 20 ml depending on the size of the chamber will be getting equally distributed then we saturate and then go for the development then we come to the automatic chromatogram development so as i said this comes in with a humidity control jar so it is fully software control fully automated also it will make sure that the humidity is constantly maintained throughout the development so in any case any part of the world you can develop a method and you can use the method again in any different part of the world but definitely you will be getting reproducible results why because we are maintaining the humidity control or humidity percentage and how can that be maintained is by using a saturated salt solution so we can also go for 2d chromatography so stability of samples on silica gel layers so most of the time what happens is uh, due to whatever the forensic samples are those are not obtained in a direct form obviously they pass through a human system so it passes through the first pass effect the liver will first degrade it and then it will be reaching whatever organ it is supposed to target as each and every drug or component has a specific affinity part or either it can cro cross your uh, bbb that is the blood brain barrier so it can in the end enter your central nervous system so as these components pass through a living system many uh, things are to be considered here that is as i said the first pass effect the degradation of the samples the formation of metabolites so there is a very high chance that say if we are going to analyze an x sample so x component can be degraded into y and z as well but those being the same metabolites or the metabolites of the same component those definitely tend to have similar properties similar structure so they can be getting separated at the same rf values for this what we can do is we can develop the plate in one direction using a specific mobile face then we can change the direction of development we can change the mobile face so what we are doing is we are basically changing the polarity of the solvent system and then we develop it in the second direction so if there are any say degraded products or metabolites even those can be separated and we can identify them this is one more option for development that is the gradient development which generally uh, most of you must be familiar with the hplc that is the gradient hplc where as per the retention times we go on changing the ratio of the solvent which will in turn change the polarities the same thing can be done here but here instead of retention time we change it according to the rf values so direction we measure the direction here so say for example um, 
for the first 10 millimeters or 20 millimeters i use a certain uh, combination of mobile face with a certain polarity after that i will simply dry my plate then i'll use the mixture of say a different polarity so i can either decrease the polarity or increase the polarity so from polar to non-polar or non-polar to polar we can change and then we can go for the separation of the intended number and type of molecules so here is an example stage one stage two stage three so you can see there are two molecules substance one and two which are similar in nature only a difference of one methyl group and the third is a different molecule so from the start you can see molecule one and two are completely merging with each other but the third is separated so just by changing the polarities and the ratios of the solvents and mixing them mixing them in specific quantities i can separate those many number of components with ease even if they are of similar nature or i can say metabolites then we come to the photo documentation module that is the visualizer so as you can see here iq oq pq compliant also 21 cfr part 11 compliance is there we can take photographs under white light short uv and long uv that is uh, 254 nanometers and 366 nanometers so this is connected to the software this model is connected to the software and the photographs can be taken here so this is how you can uh, get an image using the photo documentation module you have different uh, functions here of adding the rf tips adding the labels you can add separate tracks for it you can label there so accordingly you can do this easily using the visualizer module then we come to the quantitative evaluation part or the detection module that is the scanner so this works in the wavelength range of 190 to 900 nanometers this has a photo multiplier detector which will in the end amplify the signal and show you in the form of peaks so using a detector we can go for quantification as well by plotting the linearity graph so this is how the scanner works higher the concentration higher will be the peak response higher will be the area which is there present for the particular peak so from the lamp it the light will fall on a monochromator through the monochromator the light will be dispersed in a specific uh, nanometer and then it will fall on the plate and that reflected light will be detected by the detector which is the photo tube and it will be shown in the form of peaks so this is how you can uh, go for spectral detection which is one important aspect uh, when we consider forensic science because there are many components which have similar rf values similar properties but they have different lambda max so even if they are getting separated at the same rf values i can simply go for the spectral scanning after the spectrum is taken i can overlap the spectrum on each other and if it's a different molecule as you can see here so all of the three will be having separate uh, lambda maxes so a different spectrum different absorption spectrum from start to the end so this can be easily detected here we come to the identity spectrum and the purity spectrum so in identity only one single time it will uh, scan through the whole selected spectra and it will give you a peak then it will we can go say like yeah this is the lambda max but if you want to find out the exact purity of that particular band which is separated so we can go for the purity spectrum analysis so top of the band middle of the band and bottom of the band simply what we can uh, do is we can go for the spectrum analysis all of the three spectras of the same band will be overlapped on each other and it will show you if they are exactly overlapping as you can see that is spectrum comparison purity exact overlapping means whatever band has been separated that is pure and at the top or bottom there is no other metabolite or molecule which is mixing so if any of these are not overlapping you can say yes there is some better uh, separation which is yet to be done 
so evaluation by tlc scanner 4 here the quantification sorry So THC, that is tetrahydrocannabinate, that was scanned at 210 nanometers. Why? Because it is low UV absorbing. So even if it is not visible under 254 nanometers, that is the normal UV light, which we go for photo documentation, no issues. What we can simply do is we can uh, scan at very low, uh, low wavelengths, as we have done here in 210, and we can go for the quantification as well. So here you can see. THC and THCA, one is acid and one is cannabinol. So you can see there is a vast difference between the uh, spectrum pattern which we have received. So even if they are getting separated at the same RF values, we can simply go for the spectral analysis and we can go for the confirmation. So here quantification of different cannabinoids in cannabis sativa. So THCA and THC, both of them were quantified here. Now detection of false positive, this is also one major aspect which uh, each of you has to deal that the result has to be very accurate. It should not be that yes, it is present when it is not present. So this is false positive detection. Again, as I said, even if they come at the same RF values, if you have the standard, then how can you go for comparison? That is the spectral analysis. If the spectrums match, definitely it's the same component, but if they don't, they are two different components or maybe three different components. Then we have the derivatizer here, automated derivatizer. Just load your plate inside the hood, fill in the required derivatizing reagent and press the button. Automatically, it will be sprayed in the form of fine mist, which will settle onto the plate and then we can go for the heating of the plate. Then we come to the TLCMS interface. So this is a hyphenated technique. So hyphenation of HPTLC with MS, simply develop your plate and you can load your plate under the HPTLC MS interface and directly elute your components of interest into the mass spectrum. So what this will do is this will give you the M by Z ratio. Also, you can compare it with the MS library, which, which is present in the software. And multiple uh, samples back to back can be analyzed because there is no cleaning or no separate software which is needed for this interface. So as you can see here, simple coupling, the outlet of the HPLC pump is connected to the inlet of the interface and the outlet of the interface is connected to the inlet of the MS. So you can see how this works here. Pressure control piston is lowered through the head. The solvent will come through the HPLC pump, it will dissolve whatever is present onto the plate and through the second capillary, it will be passed on to the mass spectrometer and you can get the M by Z ratio. So you can go for structural elucidation as well. So even if you have a complex matrix where we specifically deal every time in the forensic uh, science world. So this is one of the best technique for easy identification, comparisons, confirmations. This is a joint uh, poster ASMS conference characterization and isolation of quinones from Tectona grandis leaves using innovative hyphenation of TLCMS interface using LCMSMS system. So here we come to the different uh, application fields. Before that, I would like to explain your sample preparation or extraction in the forensic field. So most of the time, this is the common uh, method or way where all of the exhibits or samples or whatever it is, uh, you know, named as per the particular state or what they call. So exhibits I've just given as an example. So it's uh, labeled in the form of 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D and 1E. So what does 1A consist of? Stomach, small intestine, then B will consist of liver, kidneys, or spleen. 
so it depends on the surgeon who have performed the autopsy which part to be given then one c will contain blood most of the time sodium fluoride is also used or maybe other edt also can be used as a preservative agent then one d will be preservatives then sodium chloride is used and one e will be urine so one a one b most of the time as per the protocols or i'll say a standard sop it is tested for phosphides pesticide drugs volatile and metallic poisons and this is uh, the extraction here is most important part generally it is done by lle or dispersive lle but the best technique can be solid phase extraction which will try to remove out most of the matrix or if in case that is not possible as i explained previously what can simply be uh, done is we can uh, apply the sample onto the plate we can use petroleum benzene for cleaning of the fatty matrix and then we can proceed with the analysis so now what i'll do is i'll discuss some uh, actual cases here yes so this is one uh, case which i am going to discuss here now that is screening uh, method for identification of forensic drugs so confiscated drugs you know illicit drugs or some drugs which are consumed so they can either come into the police labs or the forensic labs or the chemical examiner's lab so what can simply be done is they can be applied onto the plate a specific reagents can be used and then the analysis can be performed and you can see the analysis also is very cheaper so an r will be needed for sample preparation as well as uh, the analysis then quantification of tetrahydrocannabinolin cannabis sativa so this already we have discussed which most of the time uh, the samples are received for cannabis then we have rapid separation of explosives by hptlc yes explosives also can be i'll say very easily identified because uh, we have developed several methods for the forensic lab in guwahati which is in assam so for their ballistics and the explosive departments we have developed methods for detection of explosives which they get on a regular basis then this is one more case which we are discussing here fatal suicidal poisoning by chloroquine in presence of alcohol so uh, the body was found a young male waiting hall of new delhi railway station and you know empty strip of chloroquine tablet was recovered so the samples were applied of the viscera after extracting them and uh, the standard was applied the tablet were applied and then the comparison was done then uh, screening of phenethylamines in pre workout supplement most of the time uh testosterone derivatives or analogs are added in uh, supplements which give quicker results so this also can be identified using hptlc then we have assay of metformin in urine using iron pair solid phase extraction so as i said that solid phase extraction is one easier technique for you know separation of the unwanted matrix from these dirty samples and then go for the analysis then we have simple uh, method for separation and detection of trace levels of buprofen flubendamide and imidacloprid by normal phase hptlc and reverse phase hptlc so normal phase and reverse phase hptlc was performed 
the identification was done the quantification was done then we have uh, again we have hello abhijit can you yes. please make it into slide show again it is still not okay 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 yeah yeah now now is it visible no reshare your screen Yeah. Uh, now, now is it? Yes, I'm busy. Okay. Okay. Then HPTLC uh, chromatographic method for determination of chlorpyrifos and its metabolite in visceral samples. So this uh, example we have taken from. General Journal of Planar Chromatography, but uh, this I have developed a method for the Directorate of Forensic Science here in Mumbai. So we have worked a lot on those pesticide samples and detected them from the visceral samples, and then we have also quantified them. Then steroids and uh, selective androgen receptor modules modulators. So the, these are also commonly adulterated, and these can be taken in higher uh, quantities or doses specifically by the bodybuilders because as we know this gives uh, you know quicker results and increase in the muscle mass but then it has a very negative or a degenerative effect on the human body so which can also be detected then textile dyes dyes also can be analyzed here which is very easy we have different methods also developed for it so pen inks, ball pen inks, fountain pen inks, or even fiber dyes, which are there. So those also can be uh, extracted and analyzed using HPTLC. So dyes identification, this is a method uh, taken from journal, journal of AOAC International. Then pesticide screening. So different types of pesticides were screened. The spectres were taken and identified. Then three organophosphorus uh, fungicides of forensic importance in whole blood samples. So this is a paper uh, published by Forensic Science Laboratory, Karnataka. So they have taken different uh, organophosphorus pesticides. The spectrums were taken and a really good method is developed which can be used in the regular or the routine analysis of cases. Then as I said, inks. So a complete fingerprint spectra can be developed of that particular ink and even the make can be found out because the make never change. Only what can change is slightly the composition, the make, but generally it, is, it also remains the same. So those fingerprints can be compared with the fingerprints from whatever ink is obtained from the site, circumstantial evidence, and those can be also easily compared here. Then again, we have uh, one more uh, suicide case method for assay of thiopental in postmortem blood. So injected, obviously thiopental is generally injected. So that directly works on the central nervous system. So higher doses can shut it down. So at the death scene, three empty 12 ml syringes fixed with needles were found. So whatever component was present there was analyzed and then uh, compared to the component which was obtained from or after extraction from the visceral samples and the blood and so that was a match and that is how it was found out using HPTLC. Then normal phase and reverse phase organophosphorus fungicides. Most of the time these are the uh, cases or these are the things which are used as poisons which with because of the easy availability then cardenolides of nerium oleander which is a herbal poison which is obtained from a plant so hptlc was used in autopsy samples so it was confirmed So yes, here we uh, come to end of our examples. So now the session is open. If you have any questions, you can just raise your hands. 
you can un then we'll unmute and we can discuss the questions here. Any any questions? Yes, one question which is already answered, but I like to again answer it. How curcuminoids helpful in forensic analysis? Obviously, they are not useful. That was just use an example to show how the comparison viewer works. Yes, so if if you have any questions, you can just raise your hand so we can unmute you. So, uh, Vishwajit, thank you. Uh, sorry, Abhijit. Uh, thank you for this presentation and uh, all the participants thank you so much for uh, patiently listening now is a uh, now it's a session which we are where we are participants by raising their hand to ask us questions so that we can reply them whatever it may be your query and uh, we will definitely reply them and uh, one of the interesting questions which i was having actually a long chat uh, uh, and I replied with several answers to, to them uh, so as to uh, give the proper justification. It is by one of the participants who has asked that uh, uh, because that is, is uh, to be known by all analysts when they are performing HPTLC and that also in forensic aspect. Please explain how much in reality the data or results have been accepted by a forensic regulatory. Please let me know in sense of uh, accuracy, precision, and sensitivity compared to LC. Now, uh, this is very important question. Coming back to the answers, let me break up this question and give you answers in part by part. The first part is regulatory authority. Now, when we talk of regulatory authority, you know, uh, typically in amendment of any particular method, uh, there requires to be a large validation which will be done. Now, in the case of forensic, what happens, these samples are generally very uh, secretly managed by the forensic departments and they are not open for discussion because they don't want to reveal whose sample is being analyzed in what systems because there may be pressure and things like that. So the, uh, import, uh, the thing which happens is that uh, these kind of secrecy is maintained. So publication authority is not there with private labs like us. We are the uh, uh, customer support laboratory. So uh, maybe universities who are working, uh, forensic universities which have come up, uh, they are working on this and they are publishing papers. Uh, you know, uh, one of the very popular FSLs in uh, uh, Belgao and this, uh, 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 you can find papers of Mr. Praveen Nagaraju sir, uh, then uh, Kanaklata Verma who is also one of the heads. And uh, such people are there in the industry who are working with HPTLC and generating a lot of data for their regular analysis. But as you know that uh, because of these secret, secret policies and all, they are not publicized. And that is why acceptance over here, when you talk, uh, it is subjective because uh, they cannot share the data. They cannot show that this was important and this is how we troubleshooted it. So that is why regulation is a slightly uh, difficult task to get it regulatory accepted. Also, already Ancrom is already supporting to all the forensic uh, uh, departments and uh, universities to uh, develop methods and uh, then they can go in for the publications and once these are published they can be used as an additional method uh, or an alternative method for uh, working for and analyzing you know uh, generally when they are verifying any particular report they will test it with two or three methods and only give us the result to after it has been tested properly cleared this is the general approach so HPTLC can be one of them and it can be used as an additional and alternative method which can be used. Cost and time factor are very important in case of today's world. We know how many samples come in, how much the workload is increasing and we need to also uh, limit the amount of solvent systems which we are using. So all these advantages come with HPTLC and that is why, you know, uh, it can be a choice. 
Now let me come to the next question, which sir has asked is in uh, in sense of accuracy and precision. Now uh, many people feel that uh, HPTLC is not that accurate. I will tell you uh, in a blind case when uh, one of the uh, CRCL labs had approached us to do an experiment, they had not revealed anything, and we did the same experiment uh, uh, blindly without revealing the data. And we did and got the same result what they had on an LC system. So if proper standardized technology standardization is adopted, you know, simple concept like you prepare the sample and properly store it. If you keep it and open, it gets evaporated. So the concentration will change. You will get a different reading. If you derivatize it, if you overheat the plate, the molecule will get charged. Instead of getting a blue band, you will get a black band, and that will result in area changes. And then you will feel that the technique is not proper. It is not that if sense standardization is uh, 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 done properly, which is already incorporated with HPTLC system, then you get the right quality of results. Glass plates, where higher accuracy is required, glass plates can be adopted. And so there is absolutely no question of accuracy and precision. Uh, so uh, you can be rest assured that you get the right quality result. And even so, as I told you that every verification is done with two or three techniques, you can double verify it and get your results accurate. So accuracy and precision wise, you don't need to have any tension regarding the uh, HPTLC system. Now, when we talk about sensitivity, now generally in sample, you know, uh, we do a sampling in gram or in mg. Uh, just a minute. Uh, we do the sampling in the format of a gram or mg. Now, if I talk in terms of ppm, that is 10 raised to 3, we are reducing the concentration and detecting something which is in ppm level. So from gram, I go to mg. From mg, I go to mu g. From mu g, I go to nanogram. And from nanogram, I go to picogram. So nanogram and picogram levels are easily detected on HPTLC. These are... Uh, uh, fluorescent molecules get very well detected in picogram levels. So sensitive wise, if you feel HPTLC has its own uh, way of handling things. And for that PPM PP levels, you can easily investigate. When you talk in other formats of chromatography, there may be you may be requiring to go very low. But here you don't require because our plates can tolerate a very high matrix. It does not require very much of sample filtration and things like that. My colleague, Mr. Abhijit, already showed you the data which is there. And these are not data which have been, you know, just taken from hence where they are properly published papers which have been shown to you the proper, uh, proper examples that have been done actually on HPTLC and solved the cases. So these are actually telling that uh, the sensitivity has never been a problem with HPTLC. And if you see in the perspective of HPTLC, it is enough adequate for doing the analysis. But if you directly compare the two techniques, of course, LC can go to lower levels. Definitely, it is true. But do you require that sensitivity for doing your daily analysis? That is the question. Do you require a costlier technique? Do you require a more time consuming technique? for a simple screening or a simple preliminary quantitative testing? That is a question to be asked. And based on that, HPTLC becomes very relevant to your uh, analytical world. If done with very proper standardization, we also have a coming up generation where automated HPTLC will be in the future. Everything is done automated. Even the uh, plate is being transferred from one module to another module, totally automated. And it will be at par with any system, automated system where you can program it in the evening. By morning, all the results will be ready and you just need to evaluate and get the uh, work done. So that kind of technology, when we are talking about, uh, it's, where, it's a question that whether, uh, how do we adopt this technique into the forensic part? And that is why we have kept this session open for question answers and explain you, uh, explaining you how uh, uh, we uh, are coming over with these kind of sample problems and giving solution to the uh, important analytical field because one of the important concept is to learn and then to apply. If we don't learn any technique, we are very difficult to apply in the field and that is why these special care is taken so that all the concepts are cleared with you. So hope this clarifies your doubt. Apart from that, definitely whatever data we will share with you, sir, and I will send you all the application fields, the publications which have been done by the forensic laboratories. Hope that uh, clears all your doubt. 
so uh, this is from my side now we have got three more questions um, thanks okay uh, thank you sir i have received your response you have asked one more question how will you handle blood samples sample handling and solvents need to be used so i will tell you sir uh, i have also a small experience working in a cro lab and from where what we used to do is uh, we take the uh, blood sample we separate the plasma and from the plasma we extract it with uh, some organic solvent maybe acetone methanol and then we inject it into an, an lcms system so if an lcms can analyze a blood sample hptlc i don't feel will be very difficult to uh, handle such kind of samples the blood samples can be uh, handled in same way as we do with any other analytical technique there is no special way of handling in fact you can save a lot of time by simply incorporating techniques like centrifugation take the supernatant you don't need have to filter also so there also time saving is there because at the max what you will lose is one plate and which cost hardly 10 to 20 rupees a typical tlc plate of uh, normally which we use 5554 cost that much amount so it does not matter that plate is gone you take a fresh plate and even if you take a smaller plate you are reducing the cost further so this 20, 30 rupees which i'm talking is a 20 by 10 plate which can handle 23 samples you take a smaller plate you will reduce the amount of consumables you will reduce the plate cost and that is how we need to strategize so it is not that one technique is better and the other is false it is the fit for purpose what is answering our question how fast we can do the analysis and what can generate and give us good results so that is what we are talking about and uh, in this case an effort has been taken from our side to show you how hptlc is helpful we have supplied to so many fss across india and we have been with constant support to them whenever they ask for support we are there to answer them so that is the important aspect the support system the analytical queries are being solved and uh, at the same time you get the output which you require so that is how we look forward in uh, using HPTLC in forensic science and hope this gives a, a lot of details, not only to you, sir, but all the participants who are here. Thank you so much for being patient and listening to us and also helping you understand in the forensic concept. It is always a privilege of Ancrum to be with uh, you and explain you, uh, explain you these concepts so that you can directly apply where it is required. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, so that was the last uh, question uh, and we have received your thanks very well thank you sir again now uh, answered we have answered mostly all the questions yeah uh, cannabis uh, sir has also requested cannabis extract we will definitely share with you the method i have already shared you the link but individually we'll share you the method also don't worry if you have all the uh, analytical uh, research minds who are there you want further support just write us a mail at lab at the rate and chrome dot in and we'll get in touch to you and solve your query in the field of forensic. So that is from my side. Uh, um, I don't see any more questions over here. Let me check the chat box. OK, uh, there is one query uh, which has been asked. Uh, do you provide a drug library in Wincat software in this laboratory? But pesticide is very useful. So we have a library we are sharing with uh, all the FSLs and shortly you will be also re uh, receiving it. And we are also developing indigenous libraries for especially Vision Cats user so that they can also benefit from them. In fact, uh, that project has been uh, uh, mastered by Mr. Abhijit, who is uh, the uh, guest of uh, lecturer who is today on the topic. So we will be sharing with you. You don't have to worry and that you will get uh, in the package. So that is from my side, our uh, vice president, sir, Mr. Ramesh Naidu, sir, is also there in this meeting and one of our, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, research partners, uh, uh, Ati Shastri Madam is also there over here. I would now like to invite uh, Naidu, sir, to speak a few words if he is available on this session, sir. Uh, if you are listening to me, sir, uh, can you just uh, unmute uh, yourself and... Uh, speak a few words before we end up this session, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Saikat, and uh, thank you, Abhijit Kale, for your excellent presentation on forensic uh, applications. Uh, as you already know, that uh, this has got a very wide applications of different uh, field. Uh, 
but uh, forensic is also a specialized uh, field where uh, we have developed a lot of methods and uh, abhijit is an expert in that he has practically worked on uh, some of the our fsl labs uh, doing the visara and the blood samples and he has successfully uh, got some good reports and he has been appreciated by some of the fsl uh, uh, people also for uh, doing the excellent uh, analysis so uh, this is one part of it as uh, one more thing is that we also have a library of uh, forensic uh, applications wherein especially for the narcotics as well as the spurious drugs and uh, the street drugs which is becomes very handy for the people who have unknown samples especially when there is some uh, 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 some seized, seized material or uh, the a person who has already consumed this drug and then to find out that uh, it becomes a, a complex after the metabolism in the uh, in your uh, stomach so they also take some stomach wash or uh, sometimes the blood also so that becomes difficult uh, it becomes a different type of drug once it uh, gets metabolized so that uh, at that time it uh, it's very difficult for us to even use a standard so we have a spectrum library of more than 650 drugs wherein they can match along with those spectrums and then uh, come to a conclusion that uh, what exactly is this particular uh, 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 drug so especially for the narcotics uh, it is very useful and uh, this is uh, very uh, helpful for all the forensic people who are doing this uh, i think most of them are aware and to tell you that most of the forensic labs in india i think every forensic lab has our hptlc system and most of the samples are being done here if you remember i think some of the some 10 15 years before there was some drug uh, i mean huge case in hyderabad and uh, most of the uh, it was very difficult for them to find out what uh, these people had consumed but we were in hptlc especially in uh, Andhra Pradesh, AP, FSL. Those people were the one to detect the complete uh, uh, analysis was done on HPTLC, and it was appreciated by all the uh, government of uh, Andhra Pradesh also for having done a good job and finding out what exactly the drug was uh, present in the hooch, uh, which was a poison, and then uh, several people died, and it was a big uh, uh, case. so thank you very much i don't want to uh, speak much about it because abhijit must have definitely given a very insight and very uh, clear uh, idea how it this can be used in the forensic uh, uh, forensic labs so thanks a lot if there are any uh, questions or anything you can always write to dr saikat or abhijit we'll be ready to answer all of on clarify whatever the queries are there and you are also invited to our lab any time whenever you it is suitable for you and convenient to you thank you thank you very much sir thank, thank you, you sir thank you sir now i also see uh, aarti shastri ma'am ma'am if you uh, would like to comment anything or uh, hello ma'am yes very yes thank you so much for this wonderful uh, presentation abhijit it was really very insightful hptlc is uh, really crossing the borders and uh, increasing its visibility in all the technical instruments and i think this uh, new launch of 2019 is really a great move for uh, progress of hptlc looking forward for much more insights and of course this is to shape out the uh, new research area uh, under hptlc because the cost effectiveness of uh, the type of uh, uh, instrumental uh, ability hptlc has is really uh, flow bound we cannot just uh, you know compare it with a simple instrument the quality of uh, expertise we get through the insight of hptlc as well as the cost effectiveness is absolutely stunning so looking forward for much more uh, short um, presentations for application of blood sampling of hptlc thank you for making me a part of this uh, event thank you so much thank you ma'am it is our privilege and uh, it is these words which always encourage us to always stick with the student community the researcher community and provide them uh, appropriate solutions i would say for all kinds of problems so uh, th thank you once again for joining with us uh, now with this note we will not stretch this session any more because the whole concept of having this sessions is small short quick sessions to for all our people to um, understand in a very short span of time 
so with this note uh, from entire ancrum team i am uh, uh, provide uh, uh, i am uh, thankful to you and with this uh, note we will now end this session so with all due permissions of all the participants uh, write to us at lab@ancrum.in if you have any questions and stay connected stay fit and stay fine thank you and bye bye